Hello and welcome. For the first time since 1996, the nation that John Kerry affectionately refers to as Washington's oldest ally is being rewarded with full honors. No matter that the White House had to rip up and re-engrave the invitation cards when François Hollande's relationship status got an unexpected update, the French president is getting the full red carpet treatment. Uh, we look at the timing of a trip that comes as France has shown its full I guess you would call them Atlantist credentials on Iran, Syria, and in Africa, where French boots are on the ground getting U.S. support. Gone are the days of freedom fries and French bashing over Paris's refusal to follow the foray into Iraq. But issues do remain, most notably over what's seen here as the U.S.'s cavalier attitude to e-commerce and eavesdropping. How frank will the discussions be on that matter? We'll ask our panel. Today in the France 24 debate, Monsieur Hollande goes to Washington. And with us to talk about it, Christopher Dickey of the Daily Beast. How are you, sir? Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure as well. Always a pleasure to welcome former uh, Clinton administration official Leah Pizar, political scientist. Hello. Uh, who, I guess you could say like me, a confused uh, New Yorker in Paris. Confused and delighted that these two gentlemen are getting together. That's right. Fabrice uh, Ebelpoint teaches... Uh, information warfare, it's among the things you teach, at yes. the French Political Science Institute Sciences Po. Thank you for being with us. Good evening. And uh, consult, I guess we could call you an e-business consultant, right? Uh, not exactly e-business, but uh, prospective uh, consultants, yes. Pro prospective consultant. Yeah. Uh, Pierre Mawas, uh, be interesting to talk a little bit in our second half about, this is really the issue that's the sticking point, I guess you could say, of this trip, which is, Information technology, how the Americans see it, how the French see it, and it's, yeah. it's one of the big topics we'll, we'll bring up. The France Fed Get Debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and on Twitter, our hashtag F24Debate. Now, uh, there's a visit to the Virginia home of a former U.S. ambassador to France on the menu. His name was Thomas Jefferson. Uh, a Wednesday meeting with high-tech gurus in Washington. But the highlight of François Hollande's visit will come Tuesday at the White House, a full state dinner. And yes, protocol had to scramble after Hollande's recent breakup with Valérie Trivaller. Earlier speculation that actress Julie Gaillet would accompany the French president was quickly snuffed. So he will be a, um, a single man. Uh, these state dinners, Barack Obama has not held many of them, contrary to his predecessors. I believe it's only the seventh one. Mm -hmm. he, he has not held many, so which underlines the importance of this one, and they're really doing a big one. They're, they are putting up a tent and uh, so that they can host lots of people, and it's, uh, it's uh, the sign of a, of a really official state visit. The last time a French president uh, was welcomed at the White House for state dinner, it was 1996, the, the, the reports we're getting in the press was that Hillary Clinton was, was uh, uh, then the first lady, and she uh, worried about the menu because the French, well, she thought With might be good exact. reason. What do you serve a Frenchman? What wine do you serve? What food do you serve? When uh, Mrs. Clinton was there, fortunately, the pastry chef was French. So she knew she had some, uh, some inside support. I don't know who the pastry chef is now, but I'm sure it will be a very good dinner and probably an organic dinner with vegetables from Mrs. Obama's garden. State dinners, uh, what's your memory of them? They're very big deals and everyone uh, fights like hell to uh, get invited. And then when you're there? You just uh, watch it, take it all in and-, uh, and But does anything uh, happen make... or is it just so, because it, does it all go so fast that you don't really it get a chance probably goes to... fast for uh, the ones who are at the center of it, but for everyone watching, you know, you just you just want to take in every piece of it, who's there, what they're doing, what they're saying, what the entertainment is, which is always a, uh, a major part of it. And again, what the menu is. This is, this is a major, major question. Christopher Dickey, uh, obviously the menu will be overshadowed by, again, the French president's relationship status this time. Oh, pfft. I don't think anybody will be so crass as to bring that up. It will look a little strange, and he's kind of left Michelle Obama with nothing to do. I mean, usually the wife of the president, the first lady, she has a lot of things that she wants to do over the course of a state visit or any major visit with the spouse of, uh, of the, the visiting dignitary. Um, in fact, there was a problem at one point uh, when Hollande was in Washington another time for another visit. It wasn't a state visit where actually uh, Valérie Tirolier 
insisted on wearing high heels to uh, very high heels to visit Michelle Obama's gar organic garden and had a lot of trouble sinking into the dirt <laughs> while she was there. So there, <laughs> there, there are a lot of crazy things that go on, but I don't think too much policy gets made at these things. Not too much policy. Uh, we've got a comment from a viewer, and I'll ask you about this, Fabrice Bétoin. He says, Hunter says, I cannot imagine two politicians too, better suited to each other. Do you think that François Hollande and Barack Obama are a good match? I see from French, it seems kind of a odd match, to be honest. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what comes out of this dinner. But François Hollande, first of all, is not extremely popular. On the contrary, Barack Obama seems to be quite popular even though he isn't as popular as he used to be. But uh, I'm not sure they're a great match. We'll see what happens. Uh, do you, are, are they? they there, there isn't like some special chemistry between them so far, is there, Leah Pizarro? There is, between them and between the teams. Go figure. But they really, uh, there, there seems to be some kind of, a, of an electricity going on. And these two teams and these two presidents uh, uh, feel close and like they're really on the same wavelength. Why is there this chemistry? It just, it happened uh, in the beginning, right after Hollande was elected, Obama dispatched some of his closest advisors to go meet with the, uh, the uh, Hollande team in formation, and something happened there. The, the, the guys just got along and found that there's a lot of common ground on substantive issues, which, which we are seeing and which we will see this week. And, um, and it's gone well, and it's gone increasingly well as uh, Paris has supported Washington on a number of uh, very significant foreign policy issues. All right, we have uh, someone who agrees with you. Sabria says, Hollande visit reflects stronger U.S.-French ties despite the spy route. We'll talk about the, the NSA uh, in, in a moment. Um, there's also a language issue, which I suppose we, we should bring up. Um, uh, when François Hollande took the personal initiative back in November of 2012, uh, to write to Obama, he took the unfortunate initiative to literally translate the French greeting amitié, and it came out as friendly. And uh, the, the French press, have, of course, had a, had a field day uh, uh, on that. Language sometimes can be an issue uh, at, the, at these things. What, what, what do you think, Pierre Mawas? Should we be hearing the French president speaking more in English? I'm not, uh, I think they can speak. Uh, English. The, the problem is that uh, when, if, if you refer to the letter you uh, you just said, uh, the fact is that uh, more extensively, uh, French uh, doesn't want to speak English, and they're too proud. This is the image we have about French people. But the fact is that a lot of them speak quite well English, and they do. Uh, communicate and do business in English right now. If you take, as we said with Fabrice, uh, in San Francisco, I mean, the main uh, community is uh, is the French one. So we're doing business and we talk French. When, you, when and, you're speaking with... Uh... Wait, wait, and we, we try to speak, to talk French and we talk English, by the way, because we don't have any choice now. Chris Verdecki, uh, the French relationship to the English language, has it evolved in the time you've been here? Oh, I think it's evolved a lot over the years. I mean, it used to be there was a real hostility to speaking French, I mean, speaking English in France. Now I think almost anybody under 40 is going to have some passing command of, of English. And while they generally still are intimidated by their uh, elementary schooling here and hate to make any mistakes and hate to make any errors of any kind, in fact, the level of fluency in English is very high here in France. Even when they sign friendly at the bottom of the Even, Well, you know, he's older than 40, the president. I mean, he's, he doesn't fit into that group I was just talking about. And that's not such a bad thing to sign. No. It just it's was a mistranslation. But it's, it's a friendly thing to say. <laughs> but if you know it, it's more the French uh, journalist that pointed the, the mistake right. than the, than the uh, English or American ones. Right. Ahead, there will be... a. Christopher says there won't be much uh, substantive policy made at the dinner, uh, but they have ahead of the visit penned together an open letter, François Hollande and Barack Obama. It was published both in the Washington Post and here in Paris uh, in Le Monde. Um, one of the points in there is uh, they say, perhaps nowhere is our new partnership on more vivid display than in Africa, in Mali, French and African Union forces with U.S. logistical and information support have pushed back al-Qaeda-linked insurgents allowing the people of Mali to pursue a democratic future. Uh, that letter goes on to add that 
Right now, the French have boots on the ground in the Central African Republic with U.S. Uh, uh, logistical support. Uh, maybe that's where the good fit comes in, whereas the French are sending troops somewhere where the Americans don't want to. That is uh, in very great part where the good fit comes in, because this is the fight against terrorism. And this is where Barack Obama believes, knows that America has to do it with allies. So, yeah, they, they are, they're grateful to France for providing this kind of support. And, you know, 11 years ago, this very month, practically to the day, uh, we were in, in, the, in the throes of the uh, Freedom Fries crisis. That has changed, and that era is over. So now we are in a world where America is grateful to uh, have allies that will go do things on the ground in this common fight against terrorism. Fabrice Abelprin, are you surprised that François Hollande has essentially continued the policies of his conservative predecessor, even though he's a socialist. Unfortunately, not at all. No. Um, I was kind of expecting this since I mostly view politics on the digital point of view. And on the digital point of view, uh, we enjoy a healthy relationship basically because Africa, at least the, the West Coast and the North, uh, Northern Africa, or are, um, is connected to the rest of the world using French infrastructures uh, owned by French, um, French companies, uh, companies who are controlled by the French state. So basically, to spy on this part of the world, uh, you definitely need to be friend with the French people. And the Americans have put a drone base in Niger now. Yeah, because we don't have any drones. <laughs> That's a, a major Djibouti problem too. for the French. And in Djibouti as well. Mm. Uh, 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 are you surprised, Christopher Dickey, to see that uh, François Hollande is talking just as tough as Nicolas Sarkozy on I Iran, Syria, and sending troops abroad? No, I'm not surprised that he's talking as tough, uh, but I think that there's a lot of, uh, of problems in this relationship that maybe we're not touching on. For instance, back last September, during the whole flap about the chemical weapons in Syria, Obama got Hollande to say he would join him. The British dropped out. They said, oh, no, we can't go into Syria. We can't do this. Hollande says, yeah, well, I'll go. I'll do it. And then Obama changes course on him, doesn't tell him, reverses course completely and leaves, leaves Hollande looking like an idiot out there. So I can't think that that sat too well with Hollande. In, Fran in, in uh, North Africa, in Mali and, in, and in, uh, in, uh, to some extent in Central African Republic, France is pursuing its own national interests, and the U.S. is pro providing logistical and, and intelligence support, but it's not involved. And, and so uh, let's think back. That all happens um, at the end of last year. The invitation to come for this state dinner happened end of November. Is it sort of a consolation prize for having pulled the rug out from under Hollande over Syria? Well, well, I think that might have had something to do with it. I don't know. Maybe Leah could reflect on that. But the, but the, in, in fact... I think that there is an appreciation that France is a very important ally. I think that's something that's understood well by any president, usually not by the American public, but by any president. And so I think it probably was felt that there hadn't been a state visit since 1996. It was about time. And if the chemistry was good with Hollande generally, why not? Leo Pizar? Uh, France can be a very good ally, and it can also be a very great nuisance. So. Either way, it's, it, it has a real, um, a real voice in the, uh, in the Washington corridors. All right. Uh, one comment. You were, you were mentioning the relationship with the Britain, and we know that Barack, with Britain, but we know that Barack Obama um, has had kind of a frosty relationship uh, with, uh, with the U.K. since he became president in 2009. One comment here. Apparently now the U.K. has adopted de Gaulle and Chirac's U.S. attitude. So the... If you were believing that it's more the UK that's taken a, a, a long stance. Although, I should say, um, because uh, this policing Africa doesn't come cheap, uh, the French and the British have been working close together on defense, and Obama doesn't have to arbitrate this time so much between the French and the British. There isn't the discussion of why are you inviting the French instead of the British. Well, the whole idea is for all of these people to work together. I mean, isn't, isn't that what the, what the Atlantic Alliance is about? So, again, all the better. Uh, of um, course, you remember 11 years ago. I remember 11 <laughs> years ago very well. Um, but, uh, no, the idea is for everyone to work together. And, 
you know as well as I do, the U.S. is on its way out of the two longest and most expensive wars in its history. And it cannot go and deploy and put boots on the ground everywhere. And again, I'm repeating myself, it needs its allies and it needs its allies to work together and to go out there and do things together. And um, if that's happening, you know, tant mieux. Fabrice, a bel point. You said earlier, unfortunately, regarding this. Yeah, I think many French people were expecting a change. And basically the baseline of François Hollande's campaign for presidency was, uh, was about change. And, well, obviously nothing happened. And there was no change and everything... So you regret the fact that he's went into Mali, went into Central African Republic, has been a cheerleader for talking tough to Damascus and Tehran? Honestly, I mostly regret the fact that um, François Hollande hasn't changed um, Nicolas Sarkozy's politics toward the internet and the digital world. This is the place where I'm kind of an expert. When, when it comes to foreign policy, as an ordinary citizen, I'm not really convinced we should be there, but that, I, my, my opinion, isn't that important. When it comes to uh, freedom on the internet and global surveillance, um, François Hollande has done exactly the same thing as Nicolas Sarkozy and has pushed even further global surveillance. And France has become one of the global leaders in global surveillance. Um, it and that has... explains why, for instance, uh, the French have been much more soft-spoken than the Germans, say, when it comes to criticizing the U.S. over the NSA's eavesdropping policy. Absolutely, because uh, in the very first day of the Snowden scandal, um, President François Hollande uh, started acting like he was shocked, and then they downplayed everything. And then the, the German press released some Snowden documents showing that there was some former agreement named Lustre between France and the United States signed in 2010 about some kind of a incorporating France into the Echelon uh, global network. And then uh, we discovered uh, in The Guardian uh, a few months ago that uh, a major internet service provider, French internet service provider, was working closely with the French Secret Service setting up global surveillance for the French population and for the African population. And we now know that French is one of the global leaders when it comes to, to internet surveillance, alongside with the United States. All right, I want to pick up on this point when we come back. We're going to take a quick break. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate.